Hello, boys and girls. I would like to read the second half of the book, Caterpillars and Butterflies. Again, this is a science book that teaches us a lot of facts about caterpillars and butterflies. Time to change. You can see the picture, right? Soon caterpillars are ready to turn into butterflies. First, a caterpillar finds a safe, sheltered place. It hangs upside down using hooks on its body. Its skin splits and falls off. Underneath is a new skin. The skin gets harder and harder until it is like a case. Okay, that's what's happening on this page. The hard case is called a pupa. A pupa hangs without moving for weeks. Instead, a butterfly is growing. Some caterpillars hide inside a rolled up leaf before they turn into a pupa. So for several weeks, that caterpillar is inside and it's turning into, from a pupa to a butterfly. A new body. When butterflies are fully grown, they're ready to break out of their pupa. See boys and girls, they're right here. You can see the butterfly still inside the pupa. You can see the butterfly wings <laughs> inside its pupa. A butterfly slowly, slowly pushes itself out of its pupa. Then it stops to rest. Its wings are pale, damp, and crumpled. Butterflies have to let their wings dry before they can fly. This monarch butterfly must wait a few hours for its wings to spread out and get stiffer. This is the monarch butterfly. So it has to wait. Remember the wings are wet from being inside the pupa and it must wait until they're dry before it can take off flying. Butterflies don't grow after they've hatched. They stay the same size all their lives. Isn't that interesting? They're not gonna get any larger. They are going to be the same size their whole life. Very different from you boys and girls, growing every day. Up and away. Butterflies are always moving around. They never stay still for long. All butterflies have four big wide wings. Right, you can see that. Um, they flap all four wings together. The wings are covered in tiny scales. You can see them under a microscope, okay? I don't know if anybody has a microscope at home, but here's a picture of the little tiny scales that make up each wing of a butterfly. Some butterflies flap their wings 70 times every second. That is amazing. And look how beautiful these butterflies are. Now, oftentimes we'll see a moth. What is a moth? How is it different from a butterfly? A moth looks a lot like a butterfly. Here's a picture of a moth, boys and girls. But it is not quite the same. This emperor moth, this one that I'm pointing to, has smaller, narrower wings than a butterfly. Hawk moths can, run, can fly much faster than you can run. Most flies, this is interesting, I'd forgotten about this until I read the book. Most moths fly at night when there are not so many enemies around. Remember we said birds um, like to eat moths and butterflies. This green moth is a Madagascar moon moth. I think its pattern is really interesting. Moths have fat, furry bodies to keep them warm on cold nights. They have feathery feelers that help them sense objects in the dark. So moths fly mainly at night, whereas we see lots of butterflies flying during the day. Feeding. How do butterflies eat? Have you ever wondered about that, boys and girls? Butterflies and moths feed on juices from flowers or fruit. Instead of a mouth, they have a long, thin tube called a proboscis. 
they drink through it like a straw. Isn't that interesting? So they turn up the mouth, they were proboscis. Asian vampire moths can prick an animal skin, oh my goodness, and drink its blood. Look at that fact. An Asian vampire moth can do that. The proboscis is usually curled up. So here's a picture, see how it's curled up here, whereas here we see the butterfly actually drinking with it. But it's usually curled up. It uncurls when the butterfly drinks. When butterflies are thirsty, they often suck up drops of water from the damp ground. Right? We know that early morning ground has a lot of moisture on it. So that's, that's a place where the butterflies will get their drinking water. Vanishing act. What does it mean to vanish? Whoops. Something happened. Vanishing act. Lots of animals like to eat. Vanishing act. Lots of animals like to eat butterflies. Some butterflies have patterns that help them hide. Okay, you're going to see an example on this page. This is a leaf butterfly. It keeps very still. Its enemies think it's a leaf, so they don't try to eat it. Down here in the corner, hard to see, but there it is, is a glass wing butterfly. Glass wing butterflies have see through wings, which makes them hard to spot. Let's see on this page. The hair streak butterfly is easy to see as it flies, right? We would spot that out in a field, but look at what happens when it lands. Its wings are green underneath. So it can hide when it lands. It camouflages, right? It can look like just another leaf on a plant, which helps protect it again from birds and other insects that might want to eat it. Here, boys and girls, we have an orange tip butterfly. This orange tip butterfly, butterfly looks like the flowers it feeds on. Isn't nature marvelous, huh? How God created the world again. It matches the flowers, protecting it from birds and insects. Look, there's something here saying showing off. Can you imagine a butterfly likes to show off? Some butterflies are poisonous, so they don't need to hide from their enemies. Bright markings on this shallow tail right here. This is a shallow tail butterfly warns animals that it tastes bad. So birds and insects know to leave it alone. Some butterflies have big spots like eyes on their wings to make them look scary. It will frighten off their enemies. These butterflies here on the top of the page look both poisonous to animals, but the one on the left, I'm sorry, the one on the left is harmless. It copies the poisonous butterflies patterns. So one is safe, the other one is not for animals and that really confuses them, it keeps them both safe. Here, this moth has a fat body and small wings. Enemies think it's a bee and leave it alone. Does that look like a wasp or a bumblebee to any of you? It does to me a little bit. Big and small. Butterflies and moths come in all sizes and shapes. Atlas moths are the biggest moth in the world. Here is a picture of an atlas moth. Each, listen to this boys and girls, each of their wings is wider than a page of this book. Imagine that, and they have four wings as we saw. So that's the atlas moth, the largest moth in the world. The smallest butterfly is called a pygmy blue, way down here, teeny, teeny, teeny. This is its actual size. How tiny that is. Here we have a zebra swallowtail butterfly. Many swallowtails have long wings that make them look bigger. This helps to protect them from their enemies. Can you see this bird? Birds often snap at the butterfly's dangling tail instead of its body. The butterfly has a chance to escape because losing a bit of its um, wing doesn't hurt it. Okay, so even if it loses a tiny little piece of its wing to the bird, the butterfly is still able to safely get away and not become 
you know, not get completely eaten by, by the, uh, the birds. And boys and girls, that is the end of our story, caterpillars and butterflies. And I was going to share with you that yesterday I was out taking a walk. We've had such lovely spring weather and I saw a beautiful yellow butterfly. So they're starting to show up in our neighborhoods. So I look forward to hearing, I look forward to finding them as I walk. I love to walk every day. And I hope you boys and girls soon will start to discover caterpillars and butterflies in your neighborhood. I've enjoyed reading to you. Um, and I look forward to our next time together. Thank you for listening.